Yes, I think so. Yes, I think so. This is true. I've faced with friends a lot. Okay, um, really though, but I, yeah. I don't know. 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 I don't know.
So the concept was born and I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to build classes of people that are willing to also be filmed because it isn't just about what I'm doing. It's about what everyone can do. It's about learning it. It's about moving forward with this concept and your perception grows larger and larger into multiple dimensions and being able to perceive many, many things. I wasn't sure what to expect when I came to the audition at first. I knew I would meet some interesting new people, learn some interesting techniques, and it really exceeded my expectations. It was really interesting to meet some of the uh, characters involved in the uh, show. I think some of them were really good, really intuitive. There were others that really didn't have a clue, but that made it fun because we had a great mix of people from all walks of life, all abilities, and uh, that gave a, a vibrancy to the show. Uh, I had asked for a interview, or a, actually a reading from Linda, and during the course of the reading, she indicated that uh, she was doing this filming of this remote viewing uh, process and since I had always been interested in this and dabbled in it very slightly myself, <clears throat> I thought this was a wonderful opportunity. I was new to the area, I wanted to meet people of like mind and I had always in, have known Linda for many years and enjoyed uh, working with her and so I thought this was a perfect opportunity for me to continue that relationship. And the first 10 episodes were really simple. Um, we were just kind of getting our footing, trying to figure out how to, to make the show work. And we had some great people. The, the people that came on board were just so good. They, they grew with me and allowed me to experiment with what we were doing. And the funny thing is, you know, we found some people that had never done this before that were actually very good at it and, and, uh, and was really having a good time. My name is Mark Bell. I really don't have any experience with this sort of thing. It just seemed like an interesting project. I am a Freemason, so I'm not entirely unassociated with Esoterica. Everything we do is pretty much a secret. I don't know why, why what we're having for dinner is a secret, but yet it is. There are a lot of secrets there. We thought about creating various characters out of the participants, but um, at the end of the day, we decided to allow it to be very real, very natural. Just just let people be who they are and, and let it go from there. Um, and at first, we were contriving a little bit of humor between the characters, and we decided not to do that. I think it was Dylan suggested just let it be an organic process rather than uh, than not. And that way, it's, it's a more real show. Uh, we did create a few things, but not much. And every character on the show just represents themselves. They, they tend to, to really demonstrate what they can do. We decided to, um, to take Mark Bell and just have a little bit of humor with him. And of course, he was, had the heads up all the way through uh, long before we filmed this uh, to just have a, a little bit of fun with Mark and, and uh, call him the mystery man, create a little bit of intrigue with his, his character on the show, even though he isn't a little bit of a mystery on the show. It's kind of fun to, to have him there. Uh, but everyone, we're, we're sitting there and I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to get this started, get it rolling, and everyone just, you know, pitch in. Come on, just, you know, find out whatever you can think of to say, say it. And I'm sitting there and no one's saying anything. It was one of those days it's like, eh, what? <laughs> Let's let's remove you, Mark, and see what we think is going to happen, Mark. <laughs> we'll put him in as our next test case. Okay. Some shows are just easier to create than others. I remember we had the idea to go to this remote location looking for a portal because I knew of a lot of unusual happenings in that area. We get there, we film it, we have all this footage wrapped around the, the show, and I get back and it's like, wow, really don't have a lot um, to work with as far as finding a portal out there. So how do we create this show? How do we create this kind of mystery around all of the things that have happened in the area? So we came up with the idea of just showing how nature was there, the, you know, the sky, the trees, the water, the paths through, through the area, and, and putting the voices over top 
So maybe it would create a little bit more of a sense of mystery wrapped around that. So that's what we did. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It sounded like yeah. a wood knock. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on the woods out there. Mindy and Mark couldn't be there the day um, the larger group went, uh, went out to look for the portal. So we had to seamlessly put that together with the other group. But the way it was all put together, no one really noticed. Now, it was a cloudy, rainy day when the first group was there. And when Mindy and Mark were there, it was sunny and bright and clear. But thats it's really not terribly noticeable. So we were able to, to really merge those two days into one day. At the beginning of remote viewing, uh, I had probably more questions than answers and uh, doubted myself a lot, uh, probably tried too hard, uh, did not connect with very, I had very limited success. Uh, the more I just kind of relaxed and uh, went with the flow and wasn't concerned about being right, it seemed like uh, I had more successes than for failures after that point. My success during those episodes were really tapping more into my own intuition and uh, it was really more of a letting go because I've done intuitive work myself, but this remote viewing, as I was learning it from Linda, had more to do with tapping into a different part of your knowing than, than the intuition the way I had learned it before. So I would say it was almost letting go of my intuition and looking at things from a, a different perspective. Every now and then I'd get something right and I tried to figure out what it was that I was doing that actually helped me to tune in to the correct answers. But as often as not, I was incorrect and sometimes that process is just as revealing to a person's skills as getting the answer correct. I had a different experience, I think, than a lot of the people did because of that. Uh, but I really was entertained the whole time, you know, in just the unraveling of the information is like you have this strong intuition and then it's like but was I right and let's wait till the next week or a few weeks and see what happens with this you know so there was a real I don't know uh, uh, satisfaction you know in being able to prove that I could do some of the things that I've had running around in my life although my whole life I know Dylan is, is a, one of our better remote viewers for just drawing really accurate, good pictures. And when he's sure of something, he's sure of it. And he makes it really clear to us. And we're able to really, really count on a lot of, of Dylan's drawings. Um, Mindy um, was the only, Mindy was the only female in the beginning of the show. On the second season, we've got a lot of women that's come forward, but Mindy was the only one in the beginning. So we had to um, to highlight her occasionally just so we could get some feminine energy on the show. It was just Mindy and I and all of these men that were in the show. David came late. David just really never got much of an introduction because he came as a client and ended up coming on the show and um, was a pretty good remote viewer. He found the crystal. David was the one that hunted down that crystal, found it right off the bat. We, I could have walked right to it from his, his direction. So he was a pretty good remote viewer from the get-go. After doing 10 episodes, uh, especially with the, the folks that I got to work alongside with, uh, there is something most definitely going on in the cosmos in regarding to remote viewing. Uh, I'm not going to say it's 100% because there's the human element involved, but uh, there's a reason why uh, the United States military and the government and some local uh, police departments use this in order to meet their goals and needs. And the remote viewing was a side of intuitive work that I had never done before. But, uh, you know, the hole in the wall uh, where the, the money had been or had been hidden. I was just, I was as sure of that as I was my own name. So then when the pictures came forward from the people who had been in that house and they showed that it really was a hidden alcove in that wall, in that office, uh, 
that was a real moment for me, a real validation. I really wanted to keep the show to a rather pure level. And even though I know a lot of people probably think we make up some of our accurate answers, we really don't. It was an area that I was very adamant about making certain we were purely doing remote viewing. If we got it right, we got it right. We own those. If we didn't get it right, we didn't get it right. And we own those as well. As I have continued in this process with the show, uh, I've come to know some of the people, other people involved and really uh, appreciated their skills and uh, enjoyed their life stories and interaction with them. It's been a great uh, bonding experience in that respect. Uh, I'm learning my own skills, developing my own skills here and trying to uh, develop those. After the show was done, uh, I was a little sad that it was over because we had a lot of fun and I had bonded with some of the other folks in the show because we had this shared experience and I feel like I really just nicked the surface of, of what I might be able to learn and tap into within myself. I have really been impressed with the production aspect as well as the content. Uh, I'm excited to seeing the first 10 episodes uploaded and uh, we'll be sharing it with my friends and family and uh, I think they'll be excited as well. It answers a lot more questions than it poses, I believe. I think there are endless possibilities. Well, I'm here for season two, so stay tuned, right? I've been so fortunate to be able to create a show that represents something that I just really love to do. I've taught remote viewing and done it for a long time, but to be able to, to make it into a reality show is never something really on my mind. I, I just came up with the idea and uh, invited people to be on the show. It's all kind of worked out. I think the show has gone in a different direction than what I had originally intended for it to go. But I trust that whatever comes our way and whatever we have to remote view will be the right thing to remote view. Um, we certainly have had a large number of topics and I hope they continue to grow. To the first 10 episodes of Intuitive Journeys with Linda Eastburn. Woo! Woo! Very nice. What else do we need to say, Ricky? Hey, I want, well, what we got here say, could, uh, to say, hey, to all our viewers, could you please like, share, and subscribe? <laughs> That's his name. Yeah. Yeah, okay, to yeah. all of our viewers, please like, share, and subscribe. Woo! Yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Okay, yeah. let me let me talk a little bit about the, the team. Um, I just want to thank the, the team of intuitive remote viewers that were part of the first 10 episodes. David, on my right here, Mindy Spitz. We have, uh, who else do we have? We have Sid back here. Uh, the others haven't made it yet. We'll get them a little bit later, hopefully. And we just want to appreciate all of them. And then we have some new um, intuitive remote viewers here. Mary Sudith, Dr. Mary Sudith. We have Drew back here, and of course, everyone remembers Terry and Rule from um, Instrumental Furnishings that came uh, forward, and Rule's uh, Play It Forward Foundation that was part of the show. We really appreciate them as well. So we're going to have a great brunch here today, and hope you guys enjoy it. One more thing, too, I want you to add. Yeah. Say, like, no. share, and subscribe. No, yeah. I <laughs> no, we got that one. I want, to, I want you to say, like, get the viewers and fans involved. Say, we couldn't do this without you guys, all oh, our fans. Point, we love you point. guys. We want you guys to keep tuning in, watching, okay. and and uh, help us grow. You know? So we're here celebrating the first 10 episodes of Intuitive Journeys with Linda Eastburn, and we want to thank you because you're the ones that make this possible. We really appreciate you watching the show. Like, share, and subscribe, and just participate. You can do the remote viewing with us. How's that, Ricky? That's pretty good. No, no. So we <laughs> I love sounded kind of desperate on that last no, line. No, we just love our fans. We love you. <laughs> that's it, you know. That's it. You know, anything else anybody wants to say or something like that, but that's any, it. Any words of wisdom? Mindy, how did you enjoy the show, being part of the show? Oh, it was fantastic being a part of Intuitive Journeys. And Linda is the hostess with the mostest. <laughs> yeah. And it's been fun. David? Oh, I've known Linda for a long time. I greatly respect her personal skills and I've actually learned my skills from her largely. So uh, this has been fun to continue and learn even more. Yeah, David came for an intuitive remote viewing session with the unusual symbol 
and actually ended up joining the group. So we thank you, David. Yes. My pleasure. Sid, back here, how did you enjoy the show, Sid? Oh, I, I had a wonderful time expanding my universe in knowledge and in friends. Well, Sid came not knowing anything about this and ended up being one of our best remote viewers consistently. So we appreciate you very much. Mary's new, but how are you doing, Mary, with the show? Oh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun and uh, uh, educational, too. Okay, great. <laughs> and Drew, another success story back here. Drew, uh, I won't tell you what he drew because it's going to be in the next episode, but just a really good remote viewer. How are you enjoying being part of the show? Drew? I'm digging it. It's great. It's uh, increasing my awareness, and I am starting to use it on my own every day just to, to process. So it's... Uh, Sometimes it's hit and miss, but let's hope it's a hit. <laughs> and we want to appreciate, we want to give a shout out to Rural Chapel, part of the Ozark Mountain Daredevils who came by to have brunch with us today. Um, his Play It Forward Foundation um, was part of the show with uh, Terry back here of Instrumental Furnishings. So we really appreciate it. Rural, do you have anything you'd like to, to tell our well, audience? Well, you solved a huge, well, I don't know, I think you, you turn Terry on to me yeah. and because out of nowhere I had been looking for months and months and months for someone to do something with the instruments we could not you know I didn't want to take them to the dump so uh, up pops Terry and he contacts me and you came and filmed the event and I had been looking for months and months well m more like years but it, it that was the product of three years of collecting Wow. So Terry's got about half of what we got <laughs> wow. for him. I don't but, know if we were responsible for that, but I'm sure yeah, that no. Terry got them. He, he came, we, yeah. I think we made two pickup loads, right? So we did. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And we've got another storage place with more. So oh my I mean, goodness. it's wonderful. He gets to give it a new life and, and uh, it helps us get kids their instruments. And so it's wonderful. That's great. And Terry. Any words about um, the show or being part of the show? Well, since I met all you folks, it's been a, a great intuitive journey for myself, too. And being able to create these instruments and do some great stuff for some great people is always a pleasure and an honor, really. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Great job. Thank all of you. And thank we'll see you, you in the next episode. But right now, we're going to go eat some of that apple pie. <laughs> okay.